Chapter 1, The Accounting Equation and Financial Statements. We will look at the accounting equation and see how it relates to financial statements, as well as look at transactions from Chapter 1. What we have here are assets, what we have, and that is equal to how we got it. We either owe on them, so what we have we either owe or we own. So assets are equal to liabilities, what we owe, or and owner's equity. Assets are always on the balance sheet. Liabilities are always on the balance sheet. But equity or owner's equity can be on a multitude of different financial statements. Assets, we have different categories of assets and we have different categories of liabilities. But as far as owner's equity is concerned, insofar as what we're learning, we're just going to have four accounts that are associated with owner's equity. One will be capital, the other ones will be withdrawals, the other one is revenue and expenses. Capital investments increase owner's equity. Withdrawals decrease owner's equity. Revenue increases owner's equity and expenses decrease owner's equity. What we'll do is we'll look at the transactions from your chapter. We'll determine what asset is involved. If another asset is involved or if another, or if owner's if liabilities, sorry guys, if liabilities are involved or if an, an owner's equity account is also involved. We'll also determine if it's owner's equity, what kind of financial statement is involved. We can see here that our accounting equation is in balance. Our assets equal 30000 and it represents what our investment in the business. So we own all of our assets in the amount of $30,000. Capital is the only account that is on two financial statements. It is on the balance sheet as ending owner's capital and it is also on the statement of owner's equity. I've abbreviated it here. Statement of owner's equity. It is also ending owner's capital, abbreviated here as OK for owner's capital. And it is also on the balance sheet here as owner's capital. Now let's look at, we have this transaction where the owner invests $30,000 cash into the business. So cash is going up by $30,000, capital is going up by $30,000. And we can see that our accounting equation is in balance. Next, there's a purchase of supplies, which represents more than one month's worth of supplies. It represents future benefits or a few months worth of supplies and it's going to be considered to be something we would put in a storehouse and your book treats it as though it's an asset benefiting future period because remember that in the definition of an asset is something that benefits future future periods. So what we're doing is we have two assets involved. We're trading one asset for any other. So we're spending our cash. We're also buying supplies. Supplies going up, cash going down. We still just have 30000 in the business and just have the composition of our assets are different now. And we still own all of it because everything represents the initial owner's capital investment. Next, we're going to purchase some equipment for cash. So equipment is going up, which is an asset, and cash is going down, which is also another asset. So here again, we have an exchange of one asset for another. Equipment going up, the amount of 26000 Cash going down, the amount of 26000 Everything here so far is on the balance sheet because these are all assets. Everything related to assets is on the balance sheet and all liabilities are also on the balance sheet. You won't find assets or liabilities on any other financial statement. Next, we purchase some more supplies, but now instead of using cash, we're going to use credit. So our supplies are going up in the amount of seven thousand one hundred dollars now we have a payable but now we have a liability in the amount of seven thousand one hundred dollars both sides of the equation are going up see assets equal liabilities plus owners equity so our total assets are thirty seven thousand one hundred dollars our total liabilities and owners equity thirty seven thousand one hundred dollars and again um, the the assets are changing the composition of the assets are changing Next, we're going to provide services for cash. So providing services relates to the generation of revenue and we're getting cash for the services that we provided. So cash is going up the amount of $4,200 and now revenue is going up by the amount of $4,200. Revenue is found on the income statement. The only two types of accounts that are found on the income statement are revenue and expenses.
We're going to pay rent in cash. This represents one month, so there's no future benefit associated with this. So this will be considered an expense as opposed to an asset. Cash is going down by a thousand dollars. We have rent expense now in the amount of a thousand dollars. And again, the only two types of accounts associated with the income statement are revenue and expenses. And again, because it's under owner's equity, many different types of financial statements are involved. So we're going to enumerate the financial statement associated with the transaction. Seven, we're going to pay some salaries in cash. This is an expense. Cash is going down by $7,000. Um, salary expense is $7,000. And because it's decreasing owner's equity, we're going to show it as a decrease. Parentheses mean a decrease, again, on the income statement. Just revenues and expenses on the income statement. Now we're going to provide services for credit and we're also going to rent to someone for credit. So now instead of having cash, we'll have another a new asset called accounts receivable in the amount of $1,900. We will expect payment from the people that owe us money. So this is accounts receivable, but we must recognize the revenue associated with this transaction because we have performed the services and we have rented the facilities. And so we have earned this revenue. So we must recognize it. So consulting revenue was $1,600 and rental revenue was $300. Again, all in the income statement. Next, we're going to receive cash from the people that we rented to and that we performed services for on credit. So now we've received cash from accounts receivable, two assets involved. Now our cash is going up by $1,900 and our accounts receivable are going down by $1,900. Again, our accounting equation stays in balance. Our assets total $41,500. Our accounts payable or liability is seven thousand one hundred. Our total owner's equity thirty four thousand four hundred. So our owner's equity plus our liabilities are equal to our assets in the amount of forty one thousand five hundred dollars. Again, this increases um owner's equity, revenue increases owner equity, expenses decrease owner's equity, and then again this revenue increases owner's equity. Next, we're going to make a payment on accounts payable. So now our cash is going down, and as well as our accounts payable, they're going down because we no longer owe $7,100. Now we owe less. Now we owe $6,200. Again, assets equal liabilities plus owner's equity. These, the accounting balance, the accounting equation stays in balance. Assets on the balance sheet. Liabilities on the balance sheet. Next, there's going to be a withdrawal of cash by the owner in the amount of $200. So cash is going to go down by $200, but also owner's equity is going to go down by $200. Remember, we said that expenses and withdrawals decrease owner's equity. Investments of capital as well as revenue increase owner's equity. Again, our accounting equation stays in balance. And the withdrawals, we're going to see that it belongs on the statement of owner's equity. Now over here we have the financial statements and they're in the correct order in which they're prepared. The income statement is prepared first. After that the statement of owner's equity and thirdly the balance sheet. So we have consulting revenue here. So we're going to add consulting revenue and consulting revenue. Then the rent revenue from here. Then we have our various expenses. We have our rent expense and then we have our salaries expense. And so you can see from looking at this, this is kind of a goofy way if someone were to actually keep their books this way because there could be pages and pages of transactions like this. So this is just meant to be a schematic to kind of globally show you what takes place in the accounting equation and in the financial statements. But when we actually learn how to record transactions in the books of a company, it's going to be different. But this is a good way for you to conceptually grasp everything that's transpired. Inspiring. So we have our revenue minus our expenses on our income statement and that yields net income. Now we need net income in order to calculate the changes or the statement of owner's equity. This represents all the changes in owner's equity for the period.
There was no beginning capital because this was the first day of the first month the company was in business. Next, we have the new investment by the owner, $30,000. Here, see $30,000. And then we have the net income from above. This subtotal represents all of the additions to owner's equity for the period. But that's not the whole story because we must take into consideration the withdrawals and deduct them. So that will give us the ending owner's capital. Now, all of this was done, all of these two financial statements were done in order to come up with ending owner's capital because that will find its way into the balance sheet representing owner's capital. So that's why I say it belongs here and here. So this is the only thing that is on two financial statements. Now we said for the balance sheet, it's going to represent all the assets and liabilities plus the calculation of owner's equity. So these are all of our assets. And if you pause for a moment, you can add up all of the cash transactions and it will come to that. Supplies, equipment, and your total assets. Okay, I cut myself off, so let me take you to the end, and I'll finish what I was trying to say. So now we see in the balance sheet, if you were to pause the recording and take out a calculator, you can add up all of the cash to see that $4,800 represents all of the transactions related to cash. Supplies would represent 9,600 and equipment 26,000. So our total assets would be 40,400. We can see that our accounts payable is 6,200. We started out with the amount of $7,100 and we paid off 900 of it. So now our balance and accounts payable is $6,200 and our owner's capital calculated that above and so we have it from above and so we can see that this the balance sheet represents the accounting equation total assets are equal to liabilities plus uh, li liabilities plus owners equity so total assets equal liabilities plus owners equity